Australians weren't sent to Iraq and within that vicinity to destroy ISIS just so Israel can start acting like ISIS and get away with it. ISIS wasn't overcome by the West because they were competition of Israel or out of their strategic interest. They were dangerous individuals. They were disturbing global peace, not just regional peace. They were killing grandmothers just for wearing red. They were high, they were very violent. They were using the most offensive and blatant form of uh, Islamism, Islamic, a, a very uh, horrible interpretation of Islam, one that's very demeaning and dehumanizing. And that was the consensus of nearly all Muslims who were under their control. This isn't about Christians. So that's why ISIS was defeated because they were taking swaths of land, they were taking regional control, they were torturing people, beheading people, killing people, all because of what they believe in. And when you look at that, and then you look at Israel, they've been taking swaths of land, they've been torturing people, they've been killing people, and they've just been acting like an ISIS, but in a more sophisticated and educated manner, and usually appealing to their American friends, uh, pretty much hiding behind their back like little fucking bitches, like little fucking pansies, hi hi hiding behind anyone's back to, to fight. Oh, my God. That's, and then they point at their enemy and say, look, look, we're being bullied when they're doing all the bullying. They've become nothing but an ISIS. Now, I don't want to say that what was done to Israeli civilians was appetizing. It wasn't. I don't like saying that. If it's up to me and I call the military operation, I would say just stick to important Israelis, particularly government figures, their defense force, anyone fighting against you. Leave civilians alone. So I'm, I'm ne do not mistake in my sentiment. But ultimately, ultimately, war speaks, as I said in, a, in another video, war speaks an interesting language because when you've got to do what you've got to do, well, you've got to do what you've got to do. And Israel have pressed against Palestine to that, that so. And uh, they've got to defend themselves. So they've stepped away from a very religiously motivated tone in terms of violence perpetrated, but it is a genuine fight for freedom. Even back then it was. It's just that they convoluted... Their, I believe they convoluted their destiny with religious fanaticism and they didn't realise that mixing that with a genuine fight of their freedom, even back then, does not justify religious fanaticism. Uh, but I think they've stepped away from that. They realised they made that blunder and for 10 years the Palestinians have been fighting a legitimate fight for their freedom, for their peace, one which you're allowed to fight. So I'm calling Israel, the Israel government, I don't want to say Israelis because a lot of them are good. Uh, I'm calling the Israeli government as well as the Defence Force, and especially Mossad, for the fucking crocky shit they are. Uh, and I'm calling them for the ISIS they've, been cut, they've become. In, in many ways, they're worse than ISIS. So again, they've taken a lot of land and they've done so with illegitimate mandates, which is in itself a belief system, which is what ISIS were doing. ISIS were taking control of land because of their belief system, um, and which was which came with mandates, laws, and all sorts of stuff. So it's the same thing with what Israel are doing. There's no difference. They're taking swaths of land with their own beliefs, with their mandates, their laws, etc. That's all beliefs. Uh, and whilst they do that, they imprison people, torture people, kill people. So when I see the sheer desperation, as well as genius, of Muslims, armed Muslims, soldiers, flying over the border, <laughs> I'm still laughing, and a paragliding over the border in hand crank machines. When I see them do that, I take back people in golf carts. <laughs> I couldn't have come up with something better than that. It's like I came up with that. Fuck. 
motorbikes and golf carts and fucking anything they could get their hands on. They were even on, on, taking them back on wheelbarrows. It was, oh my fucking God, the scenes. If you actually saw the full scale of what was available as videos, I think you would have been, oh my holy God. They were taking them back on wheelbarrows. They were dragging them on fucking whatever they could find. They were taken back. But what that, oh, I shouldn't laugh, but it's just, come on. And it was, what that illustrates is their sheer desperation, their struggle. You don't do that sort of stuff unless you really are being pulverized and pumped by a nemesis, which is Israel, who are no better than ISIS. So we can't be hypocritical in the international community. We can't call out ISIS and not call out Israel. Who the fuck do they think they are? Are they above the law? Are they above other Western nations? Are, are they special? I don't subscribe to fucking Zionism. You can shove it up your fucking ass. That's not my fucking belief. You don't like it? Go fuck yourself and find another planet. Okay. So no, I don't. I don't koto to fucking, you know, fucking ass clowns who think that this planet is theirs. Absolutely fucking not. They've got no importance. Do you know what they are to this planet? It's fucking small. There's so much more people out there. So not for a fucking second am I, am I going to buy their fucking Zionist fucking ass, fucking mangling shit? No, absolutely fucking not. We didn't beat ISIS just so they can become it. So they can fucking cry and hide behind America's back when they feel like it. Also, the West can get dragged into another fucking war because of those miserable fucking cunts who are acting worse than ISIS. So, no, sorry, I'm going to call them exactly for what they are.